Hi everybody and welcome to Heal Heat. My name is George Coles and on this episode we're reviewing WWE Night of Champions 2023. If you haven't seen my shows before, we rate everything on a 1 to 5 scale, 1 being the worst, 5 being the best. Let's jump right into it. We open the show with Seth Rollins versus AJ Styles for the World Heavyweight Championship, the brand new World Heavyweight Championship. I guess it's not going to carry the lineage. I like this match. I thought it was a really good match. However, even with that being said, I feel like there was a le lot left on the table between these two. It could be because they put it on first that it didn't feel as important as it should have. I understand why it didn't main event, especially with the events that happened in the main event. But you're automatically telling me again that this is a lesser title because it's the opening match title. Seth Rollins picks up the win here. Afterwards, Triple H comes in, gives him the belt. Somewhat of a callback to when he won the Universal Championship. I thought this was good. I'm giving this one a four. Next up, we have Becky Lynch versus Trish Stratus. I actually had low expectations going into this. And the reason being is I don't think Trish has been that great in her return. And that's not a knock. I mean, she's older. She's not been wrestling mostly for the last decade. I mean, she's made some spots here and there. But in a way, in my opinion, in the antithesis of the first match, these guys over-delivered here. I thought this was a really fun match. Trish Stratus is really growing on me as a heel, something I didn't think they could do with her status in wrestling being the legend that she is. I really like how they incorporated Zoe Starks into the match, being that she's a a new call-up, you immediately involve her with a Hall of Famer and what could be arguably one of the great champions of WWE over the last decade in Becky Lynch. I rather enjoyed this. Trish Stratus picks up the win here. I'm giving this one a four. I like to see where this is going going forward with Zoe Starks kind of being the understudy for Trish Stratus. I think it would be a a good compelling storyline and a good way to launch her career. Now coming from that is my favorite match of the show. That's Mustafa Ali challenging Gunther for the Intercontinental Championship. The package they did before this with Ali in Saudi Arabia and the reception he got and the gear that he was wearing and the way they structured this match really put it into question whether he was going to be the guy that beats Gunther. All leading up to this, I thought this was going to be an easy match for Gunther to win, and I believed he would win going away here. However, as I'm watching, the longer the match goes on, the more I go, well, Ali's got a chance in this. It feels like he has a chance. And for them to build that and keep that going to where you think he could win, even though it's pretty obvious that Gunther is on a different stratosphere than Mustafa Ali, no... No knock on Mustafa Ali, a great wrestler and a great talent, but Gunther's been presented as something different. Gunther does pick up the win here, but it was a lot more contagious than it should have been, or not should have been, but than I thought it was going to be. I absolutely love this match, both to boost Mustafa Ali and also just the match itself was great. I'm giving this match a 5. I thought it was absolutely awesome. Afterwards, we get the first of a couple of these. We see LA Knight in the crowd, and he's insanely over with the crowd there, which which always begs the question why WWE isn't doing more with LA Knight. That's followed up with a SmackDown Women's Championship match, Bianca Belair versus Asuka. I really like the story they told here as well. Asuka coming at it from a different angle than what she did at WrestleMania, more of a heel angle. The story of the match being the mist and can Bianca counter the mist, which we seen she ducked it. Then... Asuka putting a different wrinkle, spraying the mist on her hand, which was taped up, and then rubbing the mist in, in Bianca's eyes, thus stopping the KOD, making it so Asuka had an advantage, which she took advantage of, and picked up the win here. I thought this was a really good storytelling match. It really felt like it wasn't the end of their feud, but another step on the feud, and a very compelling step on this feud. I think Bianca was a little bit in danger of being overexposed and over unbeatable, kind of like they did with John Cena. And I think the crowd was starting to turn on her a bit, having her lose in this way. I think the crowd will gain more sympathy for the rematch for this. I thought this was really good. Uh, like I said, Asuka picked up the win here. I'm giving this one a four as well. That's followed up with another one of these in the crowd segments where they show another wrestler in the crowd this time. Carrying Cross and Scarlet. And again, much like I said with, with LA Knight, I'm not sure why they're not doing more with Cross. 
it's been a little hit and miss, but I think if given the proper buildup and the proper storyline, Karrion Cross could be a major player in the company. Just my opinion. I love his aesthetic. I love his demeanor. I do understand that he's not the greatest in-ring talent. However, neither was Hulk Hogan. Neither was Goldberg, and you were able to make greatness out of them. So that's my opinion on him. I think he could be such so much more than what he is right now. That's followed up with our Raw Women's Championship match. Natalia going up against Rhea Ripley. And this was just a mauling. Rhea Ripley came out and absolutely demolished Natalia. Which is a little bit on the surprising side. And then again also not that surprising considering it's Natalia's birthday. WWE has a, a trope of doing things like that. When it's something that somebody, somebody should be celebrated. Whether it be their birthday or their hometown. They kind of embarrass them. This was a little bit embarrassing for Natalia. Rhea runs through her like Taco Bell runs through me if I eat too much of it. Just demolishes her. Rhea picks up the win here. I wanted to see a match here. I didn't want to see a run through. And and I love that they do that for Rhea. I think she's an amazing talent. And don't get me wrong. This is not a knock on her at all. I just wish that Natalia would have got a better shake of it. Much like Gunther and Mustafa Ali. Going into that, I didn't have any question. They should have done the same with this. I didn't think that Natalia was going to win this. But I think she could have been more competitive. I'm giving this one a three. I thought it was good. It could have been better. That's all up with a backstage interview with Seth freaking Rollins, who basically says he's a guy in, on Raw now. Then we go into Cody Rhodes going up against Brock Lesnar, where we find out that Cody Rhodes basically has a titanium cast, which it just look like a regular wrist brace if you're going to be perfectly honest he used that to his advantage and i don't know i think if you have a broken arm even hitting somebody with a cast hurts you i've never broken my arm but from the people that i know that have they say that any movement of your arm is excruciatingly painful so it's a little bit weird step in the storyline i did think it was a good story they told here um and i do think it might have been a misstep if cody would have won here against the odds i think this adversity of him losing and passing out and not actually quitting, Brock picking up the win by him basically passing out from pain is going to help advance the toughness of Cody Rhodes. Much like I said with Bianca earlier, you run the risk of turning the fans on somebody that you make too invincible. So putting a little bit of adversity in here is going to help him ultimately in the long run. Also, it's going to continue the feud with Brock Lesnar. I'm guessing they're going to do a Hell in a Cell or something of that nature at some point. I'm giving this match a four. I thought it was pretty good. Then we get to see another in the crowd. This time it's Omos. And again, another guy I think they could do much more with. I do enjoy his presence. I think he's someone that could be built on and someone that could be made into something much bigger than what they are doing with him now. Maybe that's the point of this match. Maybe putting these guys on here is going to be the start of something for them. Who knows? Finally, we get to our main event of the evening for the Raw and SmackDown Tag Team Championships. We have the Bloodline represented by Solo Sokoa and Roman Reigns going up against Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. A couple interesting things on the ring announcements here. I've noticed, and it's been a couple weeks now, they're just calling Solo just Solo. Maybe they're dropping the Sokoa part of his name. Also, another cool thing, Sami takes a microphone and does the announcement for his team in Arabic, which I thought was really cool. Sami came out in a, a nice robe. But he didn't look disheveled and like kind of like a homeless veteran. I thought this was a really fun match. This was one one that no matter what the outcome it was going to be an interesting beat on the bloodline storyline which let's face it is the best thing in wrestling over the last decade at, at least storyline wise anything that would have happened here would have caused some kind of rift within the bloodline whether it be roman and solo doing something that the usos couldn't or the outcome that we have here where the usos come down to try and help roman and solo accidentally Super kick solo, and then on purpose, when Roman pie faces both of them, Jimmy Uso super kicks Roman twice. Jay looks conflicted again, like he has the last few times. The storytelling in this, and Jay, who really sells all of this better than almost anybody in wrestling could, really elevates every last time that they're in the ring like this. It makes it so much better. This is absolutely fantastic. 
Owens and Zayn pick up the win here. The bigger storyline is the rift in the bloodline is getting bigger. It's becoming obvious that at the very least, Jimmy may leave the bloodline and possibly both of the Usos are leaving the bloodline. Just a phenomenal main event storyline wise in my opinion, I'm giving it a 5. Overall, I thought the show was really good from beginning to end. The only minor gripe I have is I wish that Natalia had a little bit more of a contentious match against Rhea Ripley. Other than that, I thought every match was enjoyable. I thought the main event really pushed that storyline forward. I thought this was a really fun show and a really interesting show to push storylines going forward, whether it be the Bloodline, Bianca Belair and Asuka, Cody Rhodes and Brock Lesnar, Seth Rollins becoming the initial world champion. I think all those storylines going forward have got better coming out of this, which is what you want to see. Overall, I'm going to give the show a 5. I thought it was highly entertaining. With that being said, let's smash that like button, share the video, subscribe if you haven't, and if you see that there where it says join, that's how you become a member. I would appreciate if you click that and become a member of this. With all that being said, if you made it to the end, let me know what you think. What was your favorite match of the night? What is your favorite part of this? Put it down here in the comments. My name is George Coles, and this has been my review of Night of Champions.